What type of harness should your dog wear at the beach? I am a huge proponent of all dogs being in harnesses and on leashes at the beach. Even if your dog has perfect recall and perfect behavior, you cannot control the environment around you. And I want your dog to be as safe as possible. So while there may be other dogs that are getting in your space, while there may be people who keep trying to touch your dog, while there are people riding on horses next to you, there is an element that you can control by having them in the harness and on a leash. And my big fear is that my water dogs will go out swimming. The current will catch them and I will not be able to get them back if they do not have that harness and leash attached to me. So I am a big advocate for just, you know, general safety. This is basic knowledge of having your dog safe while you are out and about. And I think it's really important to make sure you have a secondary specific harness for the beach specifically. You do not want to be using your good everyday harnesses at the beach because at the beach, you're going to be getting kind of icky. There will be sand trapped in the harnesses. There will be salt water. There will be sweat. It's not going to be pretty. And so we don't want to wreck your good harnesses by taking them to the beach. We want specific ones just for the beach that you can then wash. If you need to, you can throw it out and replace it. It's just ones that you don't care about as much, but there are some considerations within that. Now, the first thing is that, like I mentioned, sand is going to get trapped in there and salt water is going to get trapped in there. So if you have a, a harness that covers their entire chest or their entire sides or their back, that just means there's more space for that sand and that salt water to get trapped in and irritate their skin. So I like to go with as little or as minimal as possible with these harnesses. Straps just around their legs and straps around their chest area. And I recently learned a really good tip. Now, I've had my harnesses since my first dogs as adults. I lost Lacey and Jada at the beginning of the year. They were 13 years old and they had it for their entire full grown life they didn't have when they were puppies. But when we started taking them to the beach as full grown dogs, we had it the entire time. And now my new puppies are big enough to be using those harnesses as well. They have served us well. We've washed them. We've gotten the sand out of them. We keep them specific to the beach and we keep them in special bags so that even if they do bring home some sand, it's not getting anywhere. And I learned that they have done really, really well for us. That specific style did incredibly well for all of my dogs except for Lucy. Lucy has just had her second trip to the beach. And while we were there, she was terrified of our hotel lobby. So she had a ball out on the beach. You can see she had a ball. And when we would go back in, she would panic and not want to go into the lobby because there was some stuff that scared her in there. And the first time I picked her up and I carried her in, but the second time I had Gemma with me as well. So I was managing two dogs when Lucy had her little panic attack. She got so scared that she backed out of her harness. So as soon as I got home, I actually bought a new type of harness that has the um, a third strap that goes around the tummy so that it's small enough to fit around the tummy and it does not go over the lungs and her chest area because that's too wide. That way she can't back out of it. So that is something that I now have and I'm going to be using at the beach the next time that we go. I also like the idea of traffic handles. My new one has a traffic handle, which means if I need to grab onto the harness, I can control my dog directly against my dog and not have to try to control them by a leash. I really advocate if you have things with traffic handles, that's going to be very helpful to you. Now, if you've seen our other videos, I also talk about when you are at the beach and your dog is running and playing and doing all the fun things that you have a really long leash, a 20, 30, 50 foot leash for them to run and play. If you have those, those don't have traffic handles on it. They, it's not something you can use like a smaller leash for, which means you definitely probably going to want to consider that for the harness that you are getting. But it, it depends on what you want and what you need. All of your dogs are going to be different sizes and different shapes. So you have to do your research. You got to do your research. But these are the tips to help you and empower you and equip you to make the best choice for your dogs. So I like the ones now, now that I know my dogs can back out of it because none of the other ones have before. I now have those ones that no longer allow my dog to back out of it. And we will be testing those at the beach the next time that we go. And it has a traffic handle, which means I have more ways of controlling her should I need to. If I need to keep them close to me, if I need to get them out of the way, if I need to keep them from eating things on the beach or whatever it happens to be, that gives me more control. I'm not yanking on a leash than trying to control them through their harness. So I always advocate for making sure that you have the least amount of skin contact as possible. So just those smaller straps in the locations, one that's going to be tight enough for your dog. So you can have it where they buckle on or they clip on the ones that I have for my dogs right now. They are just straps that go around their legs and around their chest. And then when you pull up on the top, there's a little zip that allows you to get it straight onto their back so that it is tight as you need it to be or as loose. So if they're growing and changing sizes, this is also really helpful for them. 
And then if they like sleek down because they got wet in the water, you can tighten that up a little bit as well. And it gives you a little bit of a lead line to go into your leash at that point. So you want to make sure that you're finding things that are going to be flexible for you. And you want to make sure that these are comfortable for your dog. So we're not trapping the sand in the salt water. It's not going to rub under their arms. You got to make sure you get the right sizing and you have to make sure that it's going to be tailored to their body. So things that are going to be a little more customizable as you go and adjustable to make sure that it's going to fit on your dogs. Then you want to consider things like the traffic handles. Then you want to consider things like the price point. You want to think about things when it comes to washing it. You also may want to consider what type you're buying because here's a pro tip. Some of these harnesses are not created equal and some of them have bright colors that when in the salt water could potentially leak some of that dye onto your dog's fur. So be mindful of the colors you're choosing as well. And if you do know you're going to be taking it to the beach, Maybe before you go to the beach, dunk it in some water. Make sure there's no dye coming off of it. Test it because it'd be really bad to test it directly on your dog's fur. We don't want your dog suddenly turning pink or blue or green. We want to make sure that we're not accidentally dyeing them with the harness we're taking to the beach. But your goal here is to find a functional, easy, replaceable, washable harness that you don't really care about that will keep them safe while they are at the beach. Now, we've had lots of conversations and lots of videos on what types of leashes you should be using. We wanted to talk today about the harnesses. And we've also talked about tips and tricks for navigating taking your dog to the beach. So whether you have a dog that is terrified of the water, ambivalent to the water, loves the water, we are here to help educate and teach you so that you can make it a very positive and exciting time at the beach, no matter how your dog is, whether you're just introducing them or you're a veteran to the beach and keeping them as safe as possible. If you have questions about traveling with your dog specifically to the beach or anywhere in general, go ahead and drop those down below. There's products we should be checking out and helping to review so that you know if it's going to be a good fit for you. Do let us know. And follow along because we're dropping videos every single day to help you navigate the life of being a dog parent. We'll see you in the upcoming episodes.